Okay, welcome back. We're continuing to work with differential calculus applications, kinematics. So I've determined my initial conditions. Another question could be direction change. When is there a change in direction? And that information is found in relation to the velocity function and we can use the sine diagram of the velocity function to identify that time and then to calculate our position at that time. Notice that the velocity function changes sine at the value of 1. So when time equals 1, that's my direction change, and I see that this is when there's a sign change in the velocity function. And it's possible that for other velocity functions there is more than one sign change. And if that's the case, every time there's a sign change, there's a change in direction. Now if I want to locate where I am at that point, I'm going to put the input of 1 into the displacement function. Notice that I'm evaluating the direction change based on the velocity function, but to identify where I am at this point in time, I use the displacement function. So with displacement input value of 1, we get 1 to the power of 3 minus 3 times 1 plus 1 equals 1 minus 3 plus 1 or negative 1 centimeters left, since this is a negative, I'm left of origin. So I'm one centimeter from the origin because my output is a negative, I know I'm left of the origin. Another question could be speed increase time interval. When is the speed increasing. So we have a rule to determine when speed is increasing. And speed increases when signs of the velocity function and the acceleration function are the same. And I can make that evaluation based on my sine diagrams. So when I compare the two sine diagrams, looking at if I duplicate the velocity function sine diagram, before 1, I'm negative. After 1, I'm positive. And the acceleration function sine diagram, anything after 0, is positive, then I can see that my common sign is after time of 1. Before time of 1, I don't have the same sign. After 1 second, I have positive values for, for both functions, and so speed is increasing when time is greater than 1. And a final question I want to answer. Total distance. Total distance is relating to displacement. So I'm going to create a motion diagram, which I'll use to evaluate, evaluate my displacement. And with this diagram, I can do some basic addition to calculate my distance. Also, I want to uh, I want a time interval. So let's say that we're looking for the distance on the time interval from 0 to 2 seconds. 
What's the total difference distance covered in this time? Now on my motion diagram, I'm going to have positive and negative values, which represent my position in relation to the origin. Zero represents the origin, and then the negative values are a position to the left, and positive values are a position to the right of the origin. Displacement is the function that identifies my change in position, so I want to identify key displacement function outputs to evaluate my distance. So I'm going to start at the displacement input of 0, time 0, and that's at the point of 1. That's my distance, positive 1, one unit right of the origin. Now I have a, another critical point when I change direction. From 0 to 1 second, my velocity is negative, so I know I'm going left. At one second, I change direction. So I want to know where is my location at the input time of 1 into the displacement function. And I've already calculated that value in the lower left-hand corner of the whiteboard. Displacement value of 1, I'm at negative 1 centimeter. So 1 centimeter left of the origin. I don't always have to plot displacement value time 0, displacement value time 1 by integer intervals. The reason I'm plotting these particular points, I want to plot my starting point, where am I at time 0, and because I've calculated that I have a direction change at time 1, I want to know how far I've gotten up to time equals 1. And a final value I'm going to need, I'm going to need to know the displacement output at time equals 2, because that's the time interval I'm analyzing for my total distance. So in the displacement function, an input value of 2 will have an output of 2 to the power of 3, minus 3 times 2, plus 1, which will give me a value of 8 minus 6 plus 1, which is positive 3. And I'll plot displacement for an input value of 2 at the output value of 3 on the motion graph. And now I can connect my points, and this is going to help me to calculate my distance covered. From time 0, I go left to time 1, and then I turn around and I go right to time 2. And what I can now do is I can sum the absolute value of my two position changes. So my distance is going to be the absolute value of my starting point of 1 and my ending point of negative 1. So I have an end point of negative 1 minus a starting point of 1. I want the absolute value of that amount plus the absolute value of the distance covered after I change direction. My ending point was 3 and my starting point was negative 1. So I have the absolute value of negative 2, which is 2, plus the absolute value of 4, which is 4, to get a total distance covered of 6 units of measure centimeters. During the time interval from 0 to 2, my displacement at 2 seconds is 3. But the distance is greater because there was a direction change that I covered two centimeters of distance, then I had a direction change and covered another four centimeters of distance, resulting in total distance during the time interval zero to two of six centimeters. This concludes differential calculus applications kinematics. We have more calculus applications to come, and I'll see you in the next lesson.